without any further ado, the legend, Robert Kurtzman. Very nice to meet you, sir. Hey, Scott. It's such an honor to get to speak to you. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me on. No, no problem. Um, I don't know if anyone explained to you what the show's about, but essentially we sort of celebrate Kevin Smith and his universe. And okay. while I know you've had a long and an amazing career and there's like a hundred touch points I'd want to hit on, if I don't start at the end, I'll just, we'll never get there. So uh, okay. let's start with Tusk and Yoga Hosers and your sort of involvement. And if you can walk me through how you got involved in, in first Tusk, I know, and then Yoga Hosers. Yeah, uh, on uh, with how I got involved with Tusk was um, uh, producer David Greathouse, uh, who had done a series of films that I did effects on, and then I directed a couple films for him, um, Deadly Impact and Buried Alive. He was working for the company that was the financer on it, Demarest, and, um, and he told me about the show. They had a quick turnaround, and... As soon as he brought up it was Kevin, I was excited. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'd love to do something with Kevin. And it was our first, you know, time working together. Hey, you'd, so you'd never worked together before? No, huh? it was the first time. So Now, did he reach out uh, to Greg Nicotero first? Yeah, I, I think Kevin told me he did reach out to KMB, but um, it didn't work out. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Dave, um, Dave suggested me. Uh, and it was just through that connection of the financers, you know, that I hooked up with Kevin through that. So, and you and you've worked with uh, Greg Nicotero before, and I was partners with him. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Years. Yeah. So he steps to you and says, "I got this weird sort of thing." Yeah, he uh, <laughs> sent me the script, which is, you know, was one of the weirdest things I've ever read. It was kind of like reading Bubba Hotep for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Know? Did you know that it had been based on a podcast? Uh, no, not initially. Then I found out, you know, kind of the history of it, you know. <laughs> Uh, after the fact yeah i mean it says it on the script but you know i'd never heard the podcast yeah so. yeah yeah. and you know he's he sent me the script and i read the breakdown and then i kind of went um you know we had a couple of quick meetings about the look of the thing you know and it was it was kind of nice because i hit it off with him pretty quickly as far as creatively and stuff you know uh, I think we grew up on the same films and it had kind of came up in the business with the same filmmakers like Quentin and Robert and yeah, Rodriguez yeah. and him and, you know, that indie crowd that came up at that time. And mm -hmm. um, let me interrupt because you were right in there because of Dust Till Dawn. I mean, let's face it. Well, that and Reservoir Dogs and all the early <laughs> stuff we were doing, especially with not just those filmmakers, but like other filmmakers and some of them oh. were having, you know, a second career. Like John Carpenter was on his like second phase of making movies when we got involved we grew up on his stuff you were involved so. in a movie that when i'm in a down mood if i put that movie on it never fails to disappoint me and that's army of darkness yeah that's one of the all-time favorite experiences one of mine that and evil dead 2 of course but um and it was you know working with sam and bruce and all those guys again and it was like the little family back together again on that film and um <laughs> and because of the what was in the movie with all the uh uh skeletons yeah. and, you know the dad and the horseback and the harry house and uh thing yeah, you know for us it was like we were big kids you know we we're like oh we're we, we get to blow up shit on a real castle set you know? <laughs> so this is cool i grew up on all that all the i mean i'm the same age as kevin so i was born in 1970 so i have a lot of the same touchstones so let's circle you back to tusk i'm sorry so he tells you you get this weird script which you say like bubba hotep which is an amazing movie as well yeah no it's the same thing when i read that you know i was like what the hell but you know it's just so weird i had to be involved you know it's like <laughs> how long did it take you to design the walrus well to be honest we had by when we started they gave us five weeks to build all this stuff mm -hmm. which was ridiculous for what we were doing and so um you know, I had to, once we we started out with a couple sketches and then did a 3D model, you know, and then we went into the big version and we did it fairly quickly. But what was good is we kind of found a design fairly quickly that Kevin was really comfortable with, you know. Um, what was the elevator pitch for it? Oh, you know, I in reading the script, it's a patchwork of people's skins, you know, and things <laughs> that he's put together and he, he modifies his body to fit inside of it and and um, so it became like a Texas chainsaw thing, you know. It's okay. like Leatherface, <laughs> you know, Frankenstein, you know. Like, you don't you don't have to go too far. <laughs> right, exactly. I like like somewhere down the 
And I was one of the guys. I was one of the people who actually saw it on opening night in the theater. Uh, I, but I liked, like, there's, like, an ear somewhere down the middle and stuff. Somebody's face stitched on, kind of <laughs> yeah. like Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah, very much. Or it also reminded me, what was that old movie where the guy had a twin that was hacked off a basket case? Yeah, there's basket case. <laughs> but that, the, the, then there's uh, the Manster, which oh. is the the foreign black and white film that the uh, where the eyeball starts where they got that for Army of Darkness. You know, the eyeball pops out of his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He grows a second head. Oh, that's, that's yeah. Manster. So yeah, that was very dark. That was like the darker moment of that. <laughs> uh, then it goes to you know, my fair lady. Ha. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite. A, yeah, it goes from one extreme to the other. Like, oh my God, it's growing bigger. So you said five weeks to build the walrus. Did you have to do other things as well? I guess make it float. Oh, we, we had the <laughs> surgery stuff, you know, and uh, oh yeah, his limbs off and stitching his armpits together, and then the uh, the suit though. See, there's multiple suits. We had ones that he would lay down in that was full body, and then we had half ones that we could do certain close-ups with without having to put them in the whole suit. And we had ones to go in the water, you know? Um, so it was a, there were kind of a six different suits for that. Oh yeah. And there was also the other, the bigger walrus suit, if you will. Well, then there's the, yeah, the Michael Park suit. <laughs> yes. When you saw the final thing cut together, the walrus fight, what was yeah. you, what was your reaction? <laughs> Thank God he trimmed it so short. <laughs> did, uh, did you find did you find it funny or intense or? Uh, no, I found it funny. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, it's hard not to find it. It was first off, it was almost impossible to move those guys around in those suits. <laughs> yeah, they're literally just doing push-ups and bumping into each other. <laughs> and there's moments where they're kind of funny on set to watch. They're so. kind of garbage bagging a little bit, you know, like a little puffy air stuff is going on. It's just like, wow. <laughs> but it, I love the movie. Don't get me wrong. I was in on the joke from the beginning. And to think that someone like people would animate Kevin's bits and then it kind of became his thing. You know, he would smotimations. But mm -hmm. this was like the ultimate. This is taking a podcast episode and making a movie based on that is like the next extension. So he's way ahead of the puck. <laughs> so tell me about yoga hosers and how that grew. Well, that well obviously came out of uh, elements of Tusk, you know, and the cast of Tusk and the characters in Tusk. So um, they all slide over into yoga hosers. And uh, that's another one. Kevin sent it to me and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so. See, now this one I haven't seen yet. So I'm still, I mean, I've seen the trailer, I've seen, you know, that kind of stuff. But He's I, touring with it this summer. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So, um, no, it, it happened fairly quickly, too. It's like he called and said, hey, we're doing this, and we're going to start quick, and this is what you got to do. So I get the script, and the only thing that we did creatively, like bantering back and forth, was come up with the origins of the Bratzies and the, um, or the, uh, you know, what they're made of and the design element being a, a sausage and all that um, with Hitler DNA. <laughs> it's like, so. And those were originally supposed to be Jay, correct? Yeah, Kevin's talked about this, you know, publicly. So, But, yeah, uh, Jay was supposed to, be, to do the part, and we built everything for him and then went to shoot, and he, he's claustrophobic. And if we would have known that if we did a life cast, but we did a cyber scan of his head, which – you know, we didn't require covering him in anything at that time. Yeah. But you went for a classic mold. Yeah. Um, and he was claustrophobic. Well, when we started putting him in the makeup was when we found out he was claustrophobic. So. <laughs> um, Not the best time. No. And then so we ended up pushing the shoot a few weeks, and then I redid the makeup on Kevin, and Kevin decided to play the part. So See, it's so interesting because the first time we met Kevin and had him on the show, we met him at the stash, and it was right after he had done that. Mm -hmm. So he's clean shaven. He had to shave. He hated that. <laughs> yeah, and we even we even got like we and we have video of me talking to him, and yeah, he's it's that baby face Kevin. Yeah. So yeah, it was very funny. That's what I'm finding more fun about yoga hosers. I don't know it as well. When Tusk came out, uh, when I sat there in the theater, I kept remarking to myself, "I'm like, wow, this really is just the podcast set." you know to to movie right you know that I, the story was was the same there was a couple differences but for the most part i was amazed how much it was like the podcast this time 
this script is just based on a vague reference and uh, uh, to another person who's just sort of a cameo character in this film, as far as I know, which is the uh, the yoga instructor guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, Justin. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you know, they brought in the two girls in the main the main kind of crossover, but then they have Guy Lapointe in it as well. Oh, yeah. And so, um, you know, it's and it, and, it, and it crosses over yet again when you get to Moose Jaws, which Kevin's talked about a little bit. So... Hey. Now you guys did Part not. Trilogy, so <laughs> you guys did not do the prosthetic on Johnny Depp in that first one. No, no. Uh, okay. Johnny has his own makeup guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he still definitely made well, it. Saul like Harlow that. does that for him. Yeah. Okay, made it look he, like a he dick. He did it in Tusk as well. Oh, he did. Mm -hmm. Is it as veiny? Oh, uh, they uh, they purposely have fun with that. Yes, so yes. You'll yes. see. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, let's step back now in your career. I, I mean, I love Dust Till Dawn. Can you talk to me about how that happened? Well, that, that's, that was a wonderful 10 years uh, of my life on that one. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. No, I, I came up with the story to, to, you know, I wanted to uh, get a script that I could go out and use as a, a stepping stone for as a director, you know, something small I could do. So I came up with like a kind of an assault on Precinct 13, Night of the Living Dead, but with vampires in a strip club idea, <laughs> you know? Yes. And of course, which, which comes to everybody's head every day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you always want to try to set some sort of a scene in a strip club just yeah. so you can go hang out all day there. Focus on, on what you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wrote the story and then at that time we found me and John Esposito, who uh, was originally going to write it. He was doing Stephen King's Graveyard Shift at the time, so okay. we found another writer, and we had gotten recommendations to look at these scripts by this kid named Quentin Tarantino. And the writing, the writing samples they sent were Res Reservoir Dogs, True Romance, and Natural Born Killers. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> and this is prior to Reservoir getting off the ground or anything, you know, way before that. And it was like '88, '89, I think. Then. Then basically, I had it set up a couple places over the years, and I won't even go into detail who and what and where, but <laughs> things didn't work out, fell through. Uh, most of the studios passed on the script because it was didn't follow a normal structure. It was reason one, and which is what makes it unique. And it's a and, genre mashup before there right. was such a thing. And they, you know, we got a lot of passes. Plus, uh, you know. It was a little really harsh and crude and language was crazy. And uh, even though at this point, by this time, we've already done Reservoir Dogs and then um, uh, four rooms. And now we're into what Pulp Fiction. Um, and even with the su success of Pulp Fiction, there was people looking at the script again and various people trying to set it up in various ways. And... <laughs> uh, one of the problems was I was attached as a director, and that was a problem. I had well, I hadn't done anything. Okay, some second unit. Oh, work. okay, so the, my first I, film. And gotcha, gotcha. Years went by of trying to get this up and down off the ground, and eventually, Robert Rodriguez mentioned that he had heard something about this script and wanted to see it, and and then once he wanted to direct it i just said i'm not i'm not going to direct it I'll, I'll just be a producer and do the effects and get my story credit you know let and, me uh, can i ask you a question yeah. based on let's say your movie knowledge or your knowledge of making films at the time and mm -hmm. say you coupled it with today's technology mm -hmm. could you have done that film like without a lot of the hassles and Oh, you mean just totally raise it independently and do it? Well, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Based on yeah, today's That's social how media. It was originally it was done. I was just thinking of a quick road picture and then uh, trap everybody in this environment and <laughs> one gag after another. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I get that. But um, yeah, that did you ever see that? Was it Demons? It's one of the Italian Demon films in the church. Yeah, it's a Dario Argento produced movie. Or, or yeah, it's like you end up. It's in a theater. One of them. Like the that's actually uh, it's 
Demons is not in a church. It is a theater. Yeah, know? which I I saw that in a theater. So that I'm like, wow, this is a great gag. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that movie Anguish. You ever see that? I don't know that I saw that Zelda, one. Zelda Rubenstein. No, that one I haven't seen. You have to see it. It's actually kind of interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'll add it to the list. <laughs> um, well, Where were uh, we? <laughs> well, yeah, we're talking about the hassles of getting your movie made. <laughs> So anyway, uh, eventually once Robert got involved, Miramax came involved, Quentin got back involved as a producer, you know, everything just, and, and the movie to me, I mean, it's the best thing that ever happened to that movie because it's, it's now considered a classic, you know, yeah. it's a perennial and everybody loves it. And, and, um, and Robert brought a, a cool vision to it with the Aztec elements and everything. It was really cool. It just changed it up and, um, they put a great cast together. So. I was going to say, I love your use of Cheech Marin. Yeah. He's, he's so times in the movie. Yeah. What was the, who, who came up with that gag? Do you uh, recall? The, 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 the speech. Well, to have him in several times, several different characters. Uh, that just happened by the time they were, in, you know, in production there. It was like, he's going to play him too. And him too. <laughs> it's like, yeah. We like this. <laughs> we like this guy. Uh Yes, and the, essentially, yeah, it is a long setup for his punchline, isn't it? For oh, for the uh, the speech for teachers, I I told it was supposed to be the other bar. I can't remember the exact line, but it was genius. And you do deserve all the accolades, and you were ten years ahead of your time, probably. You know, that's why I, I find Kevin's movies like that. Tusk, yeah, they always find an audience later. But that's what's great about Dusk is it it continually finds a new audience. Oh yeah, know? Tusk, so. Tusk, I think is going to beat the that. 10 year rule with Kevin because now with Netflix and availability, an audience can see that movie so much faster than they could in the video era. I know millennials who already tell me they love it because it's so weird. I'm like, yay. Well, yeah, exactly. People are like, uh, and they come to the conventions, they see like something from Tusk and they go, that's that movie. You (laughs) You also worked on Dune. I'm just a big Dune fan. Uh, the miniseries. Yes, yes. yes. Still, hey, it's Dune. It counts. It's actually better than the film. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, it's more true to the book. Yeah. The book Dune actually reminds me in some respects of Dracula, because it's kind of told through that, it feels like it's a news story. The, uh, I'm trying to think, we did three of those initially, and then they did three more, of which I don't think, we didn't do the the other three. Yeah, the other ones, were, yeah, that was sort of three, the yeah. children of. What did you guys actually do? Like design the new the worms and the okay. We did like big, big back plates of the worms for the people to ride on that got comped into CG shots, and now and we did like the mechanical worm when they wrestle them out of the. You know. How were you able to do the, approach the design without going back to David Lynch's stuff? Um, well, the, the, John Harrison, the director, was like very specific about certain things, and he wanted to stray away from with that look okay you know so um and what, what, what what's the the spice yeah the the um the little um manta ray guy or tentacle you know yeah 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 we did that okay you know. the traveler the guy who yeah. folds space yeah that's him yeah david lynch's like guy was sort of like this big morphous like blobby guy yours had a little more form to it more like an angel Right. Uh, you know, it was kind of like a, the abyss thing or something. I guess the approach was to try <laughs> yeah. to do something not quite like that, but, you know. What do you like doing more, being designing on the back end or directing movies? or? Uh, always directing first, but when I'm not doing that, the fallback is designing this other crap. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite part of the process? Um, to be honest, shooting. Um, hmm. it, it depends on the movie though. Some movies are laborious, you know, and then some movies are, um, have a different kind of energy when you're on the set and you kind of feel you're finding the movie while you're shooting and it's, it feels great, you know? And then there's movies like the Hulk where you sit there <laughs> and you shoot like one day out of four weeks. And that was and, the, that's the angle. Angle. I'm sorry. Skype kind of breaks us up, but I just want to qualify that. That's the Ang Lee Hulk, not the the Incredible Hulk. Yes, yes, that's the Ang Lee Hulk. Yeah. Wow. To hear that that was monotonous? I find that hard to Uh, believe. But, you know, you're on a movie, I don't even remember what that shoot. It was like like a 120-day shoot. I mean, that's, you know, sometimes the the 
John dies at the end movie or the late phases or these smaller movies are more fun because you're there and there's a certain energy and you're working with the filmmaker and you're finding shots and you're doing cool stuff. And, and it's, it's just different. That's what I was about to ask. What's been the most fun film you think you can work that you've worked on that you recall and you always look back on fondly. Oh, it's always army of darkness. Or Evil <laughs> too. That's so yeah. awesome. So, and well, um, it really know, shows too. A different time too. And then, you know, Army of Darkness was a completely different experience, but in the same kind of vein. Wouldn't make that movie today either. No. Yeah, I mean, you just wouldn't. I mean, why? Everyone would go, why would you do it that way or when you can do it this way? Yeah, I know. You know, these. this is kind of a lot of those movies we made before the digital era. So, like, people were cutting them on flatbeds and, <laughs> and you, your movie became what it became because that's the amount of time you had to mess with it. Yeah, and, yeah. Now you can mess with it over and over and second guess yourself with just with a switch of a, you know, hit of a button, you can change it. And it kind of, it's positive and negative at the same time. Have you ever filmed any documentaries? Uh, no. No, other than like genre stuff, like behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, yeah you know, DVD things and stuff like that. Do you do any podcasting? Uh, I'm doing it right now. Other than this, have you been I've on a few? Yeah, you've been on some, but you yourself do not have a show. No, I don't. Oh, that, that would be that would be amazing. The stuff you could deliver. <laughs> I'm kind of a podcast pusher. Um, well, I very much appreciate you you giving us this time. Oh, th thanks for having me. Is it is this live? No, we're not live. We are okay, recording. So you're going to bleep out all my f bombs, right? No, not at all. Okay. Is that okay? Can I leave him in? Because no, usually we do. We have, yeah, I'm, we, yeah. I'm an f bomb dropper. So. <laughs> well, so is Kevin. So yeah. if we can't pretty much have, be a Kevin show without allow, allowing swearing, <laughs> so don't worry about that fucking shit. <laughs> you have no idea how much I appreciate this. Thank you so much. And... Anytime, have me back. I'll come back on. Oh, awesome! After we have something else to talk about. Let me give a plug for a paranormal penitentiary, my uh, haunted attraction at the Ohio State Reformatory. Uh, this year, we're, um, um, it's called Monster Lockdown. Where is it? it it's at the uh, Mansfield Reformatory, the Shawshank Prison Reformatory, Mansfield, Ohio. Um, it's the historic Ohio State Reformatory. Looks like a castle, and we're decking it out, doing a, doing a haunted attraction there. That's this so year. Awesome. Start September 23rd, right? Yeah. That's great. That is so All the cool. way through October. Wow. That's great. Do, do you have it like uh, music and everything scored? Oh, we got, well, yeah, we have, um, uh, there's, we set it up so we have like speaker areas and each thing has different elements, sound effects, it's stuff that we mix here and put together. Oh. We do a lot of stuff with uh, Midnight Syndicate, you know those guys? I do know the name, yes. Yeah, uh, they're local guys, Ohio. They scored the Rage for me and Dead Matter and a couple other movies we've been involved with together. If and, I'm not uh, mistaken, they did like a D and D soundtrack. They've done a bunch of those too. Yeah, and, yeah, but, that, yeah. They do. Ohio. I just really showed my nerd there. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, uh, oh yeah, I'm being pointed here. Go to creaturecore.net, c o r p s dot net. That's our website if you want to see anything or link up to the Paranormal Penitentiary site. CreatureCore.net. CreatureCore.net. Cool. Again, thank you so much. And after, what is it? Not yo Are you working on uh, uh, Moose, Moose Jaws? Jaws? Yes. Uh, we haven't started that yet, but we are doing design stuff for Ooh, it. Oh, yes. We'll definitely have to have you back. <laughs> That's great. Cool. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much. All right, everybody. Robert Kurtzman. Bye.